I was trying to remember. Yeah. Okay. Hello, hello. Welcome everybody. Happy Wednesday. We're so excited uh, to have everybody here today. I'm just gonna get started with a brief welcome and some housekeeping while uh, hopefully some other folks continue to join us. And uh, if you wanna take a look in uh, chat, we're gonna ask a few questions of folks if you wanna go ahead and um, answer for us. But first, First of all, just wanna say welcome to everybody. I'm uh, Alexandra Villano. I'm the Senior Director of Program Development and Strategy at HFC, formerly known as Hilarity for Charity. We are a national nonprofit that provides uh, support and care to Alzheimer's family caregivers. Um, and so I'll be putting some more information in, in the chat later on about HFC. Um, so first housekeeping is that we are recording this session. So uh, just for you to be aware so that we can share it with folks who are not able to make it today. It'll also be posted on HFC's YouTube. So please feel free to keep your cameras off if you're more comfortable, uh, but we do uh, encourage um, participation and engagement. So please feel free to either raise your digital Zoom hand uh, for Elizabeth or you can ask your questions in the chat box and um, we'll be working together to get your questions answered. There's going to be lots of resources shared today. Don't get too worried about missing anything. Um, we have a, a great list of resources that we'll share with you after the event. I will also put them in the chat if you want to open tabs on your computer um, and save them for later, but just want you also to not stress about it <laughs> because we will be sending them um, post event. So um, this is part of our ongoing series to provide caregiver tips and um, resources and provide a community for folks who are um, in this space with us and on this journey, this caregiving journey. Uh, so we're super excited today to welcome Elizabeth Miller. Um, Elizabeth and I have been chatting throughout the year and she is an amazing caregiving consultant. Uh, as well as the founder of Happy Healthy Caregiver, and who doesn't want to be happy and healthy? So super excited um, to have you here with us today. I will turn it over to you, and I think Elizabeth posted a few questions in chat if you guys want to go ahead and, and respond, um, and we'll go ahead and get started. So over to you. Awesome. One, one second. It looks like my um, screen sharing did not work there. Let's see. It was there a second ago, so it Okay, good to know. And what I'll do in the meantime is spotlight you for everybody. Screen share, screen two. How's that? Yes, we see it. Perfect, perfect. Well, welcome everybody. I'm excited to um, connect here with you today. Thank you, Alex, for the introduction and for kicking things off here. We did put some questions in the chat to kind of get things rolling. We want to get to know you and get a little bit know who's out there and who's who um, learn a little bit more about you. So these are all journal prompts from my um, my book, my Just For You Daily Self-Care Journal. Uh, thing I'm passionate about is, is helping family caregivers integrate self-care and caregiving into their already crazy busy lives. And self-care can look differently for caregivers. It could be you know, emotional, physical, spiritual, mental, um, and sometimes just organizing your paperwork, frankly. So we would love to get to know you. Pick a question here. I'm gonna kick us off um, by picking one uh, myself so that you can get to know me a little bit. We'd love to find out what, uh, what you're all about. So one of the things that says, number six, what's the bravest thing you've ever done by yourself? Something recently that was way outside of my comfort zone. I was with other people, but it took me to kind of lean in and mentally and physically get myself out there was I did a, a backcountry horseback riding trip for 40 miles. It was actually a caregiver retreat or I trained the trainer caregiver retreat that I'm going to share with you here today. Um, but getting on a mule and riding 40 miles over four days was way outside of comfort zone for this suburban girl. I live outside in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, haven't touched a horse in probably over 10 years. And when I touched one, it was probably for less than an hour. So uh, way outside my comfort zone, we would love to kind of figure out 
what you're doing and get to know you a little bit. So again, if you'd like to chime in and just share what's working for you. Next up is I want to share with you what you're going to learn in today's session. So thank you for taking the time um, and investing in yourself. This is going to be hopefully a good use of the next um, less than 60 minutes now, but we're going to talk about naming our worries because I think that's going to help funnel you toward where you um, where would be best used to spend your time next to help minimize those worries. And then we're gonna identify the resources that are gonna help you address the worry. We can't boil the ocean here, so we're gonna to have to just lean in and uh, really concentrate on what's gonna feel good and help you feel better uh, in the next you know, short term. We're, I'm gonna give you a general overview of a lot of different resources. Uh, Alex had mentioned that uh, we're gonna we're gonna share a lot with you here today, and I'm gonna encourage you all to also share in the chat of what's working for you because the best advice that I've ever gotten has come from fellow family caregivers. So you're gonna get a lot there, but um, don't be overwhelmed. We're definitely not here to add more stress to your plate. We are gonna learn from each other as well. So if we've covered these four objectives in the next 60 minutes, we have one. Uh, she introduced me, I'm not going to spend a lot of time here, but basically I'm a family caregiver who has turned into a caregiver advocate. I told you what my passion was. I enjoy working with um, caregivers to, to figure out how they can integrate self-care and caregiving into their lives. And I have felt like all of you, um, when caregiving entered my life, uh, in, my, in my husband's life, we found ourselves in the sandwich generation, squeezed between caring for our two active teenagers at the time. They were in, um, one was in middle school, one starting high school. They were in travel sports. We were in the peak of their careers. Um, my husband's mom had lung cancer and my parents have had chronic health conditions. Um, basically my entire adult life. So his mom loved Halloween. So it's my favorite picture of my mother-in-law. And I also have an older brother that has a developmental disability. So caregiving is not something that's new to me. I've always been exposed to it through different family members, but it really got crazy um, in the last dozen years. And so I don't know if anybody can relate to what this, what this looked like. Um, so we've got a problem here. I know for me, uh, you know, what I had wished had happened when I was, you know, going to doctor's appointments with my parents, sitting by their hospital bed, um, asking questions, is that I wish, and if I could wave a magic wand, what I wish could happen is that they would start sharing different caregiving resources with me, not just, hey, here's how you can manage mom's diabetes better, or here's how you treat the wound care, or here's how you cope with the sundowning, but it's about, hey, you're probably losing your mind right now, and here are some resources that can help you. And I think part of the problem with that is that our healthcare system is fragmented, um, and, you know, people are trying to help, I think, all over the place. And as family caregivers, the last thing that we have is more time to invest in turning over all these rocks and trying to figure out where the resources are. So I'm a quote person and they help me process, you know, what's kind of going on in my life. And, um, and I find affirmation, motivation, wisdom, and words. And so Irma Bombeck, she said that worry is like a rocking chair and it gives you something to do, but it doesn't never get you anywhere. And that is something that I think as caregivers, we all have worries and was trying to figure out, you know, I want to share a bunch of resources with you all, but I don't want to overwhelm you. And so how can I ground that and really get you focused? And so we're going to concentrate today on what your worry is and then address that. Before we move on, though, one of best advice, uh, another family caregiver or a friend of mine had told me when I was really, you know, you could just barely scratch the surface on me, you know, and I would just start weeping about everything. And Elizabeth, when you and something bad happens or twice, but when you minimize that worry and you avoid it and take action, and then something bad happens, you're only going to suffer once. Makes sense to me. I don't know if that makes sense to all of you, but it's, I'm only going to choose to suffer once. Um, and so really I'm not a person who gets stuck on worrying and I'm hoping that that will rub off on you all today. 
So worry though is kind of inevitable and we can reframe it though, uh, but it is going to creep up on us. But so we wanna address it today. In 2016, I became a certified caregiving consultant because I wanted to get the skills on how I could be a better coach for family caregivers. I had experienced this myself, but how can I really serve my community better? So one of the tools that we use to help facilitate conversations in our support groups and our one-on-one -on -one session is these wheels. And we have a wheel about worrying. So in your chat, I would love to for some of you to just kind of hone in on what it is related to your caregiving um, world right now, where you are worried and what's keeping you up at night um, is a good question to ask to kind of figure out what your worry is or what's waking you up and not allowing you to go back to sleep is usually what happens to me. I can fall asleep great, but staying asleep is another thing. So if you put that in the chat, if you're comfortable on what a worry is for you so that we can see if um, we've got some common commonality there. So while we're checking those out, um, I want to let you know that peace of mind from worrying can come from taking action. And so today I'm going to be focusing the resources and suggesting actions for seven different worries. What I don't want to do is I don't want to should all over you, S-H-O-U-L-D, because I just really want to lay out the options. We're all different. We have different situations. Uh, some solutions are going to work for some people and not for others. We, we all need resources, but you're going to have to try some of these on and you're going to have to see if they work for you. And some of them will, hopefully, and some of them won't. But I, and then I'm going to invite you. Um, I know Alex is going to put some of the links that I'm sharing in the chat as we're going through. Um, she's also going to share this out afterwards. So don't stress out if you're scrambling to write things down. You're going to get the resources and the recording um, as well, but stick with us because I think you're gonna get more out of this uh, if you can participate and, and share along alongside of us. So the good news I said is resources are out there. There's 53 million caregivers in the US. People are working to try to figure this out. Um, the bad news is, is it's not all in one place. It's like this little treasure chest. Wouldn't that be amazing if we could just open up this treasure chest and say, oh, we need this and we need that. And so together, we're going to unpack some resources today. And I'm going to be honest with y'all. I'm still learning every day, every day with my um, support groups and the caregivers I talk to and the webinars that I watch and podcasts I listen to. I'm learning about amazing resources that then I can hopefully connect to um, and fast track you to them. That's a, a huge goal of mine. I, I see myself as a, as a connector for those. And so I want to learn about the other resources from you all today. So if things are working out for you as we're talking through the, the worries and something comes to mind, share it in the chat. We want to know what it is. Um, and I want to learn about it. So thank you for being a part of our, our session today. Some of the resources I'm going to share free. Some of them do cost money. I'll try to point out which do, which do this. And then you decide. You're going to know your care recipient best. Some of them are for care recipient. And some of them are for you as the caregiver. A lot of them are for you as a caregiver because that's you know a soft spot for me is I feel like we do a lot for care recipients, but what are we doing about the, for the caregivers? Um, but you know your situation best. So the first worry we're gonna tackle today is emotional and physical burnout. So you may know that this is, you may know that this you're already burned out or, or you might just be saying things all the time like I'm so tired, I'm overwhelmed. I don't know if I can or want to do this anymore. I'm just not myself and I'm angry and resentful. If those are the kinds of things that, are, that you're struggling with then this could be your worry that we're gonna address today. So the first action um, that we're gonna talk about is that you can take to address your, your emotional and physical burnout worry is to schedule. And the key word there is to schedule regular breaks. I love this quote from Ann Tumlinson of Daughterhood. She says, a break is better than a breakdown. I think we can all relate to that. Sometimes we need the break before the break happens. Just scheduling the break and knowing that it's out there gives us hope that we can kind of get to this next step. So hopefully from um, the HFC, if you are already plugged in and heard about um, HFC, as you know about their Caregiver Respite Grant Program, they... 
I was amazed to see they've awarded over 300,000 hours of in-home respite care across the US and Canada. That's amazing. But we know, and I know after talking to Alex that she'd love to award so many more. Uh, that is something that you have to apply for. And it's a partnership that they have with Home Instead Senior Care Network. And you do have to uh, be eligible for that. So you have to be a caregiver of a loved one living with Alzheimer's or dementia. And you have to um, be facing some final or, and or more emotional hardship um, due to the unique challenges that you're going through with Alzheimer's and dementia. And you have to be in the US or Canada. So if you hit those three criteria, um, then you might want to apply for their, their caregiver respite grant program because that would be an amazing way to get a scheduled break just to do, to go to work um, without a worry, grocery shop, medical appointments for yourself, or just, you know, just sit and do nothing, take a nap. Um, another place that, that you can sometimes get scheduled extended breaks, regular extended breaks, is through a, um, a older adult communities. So some skilled nursing facilities, assisted living communities. Um, now COVID might change their, their guidelines here and, and also you may not be as comfortable for it, but know that it's out there that you can sometimes do overnight stays or week long stays or short term stays with them so that you can take a vacation um, and have a break. The when during the get to know you session, I'd mentioned the train the train, train the caregiver leader retreat that I just went on in Wyoming. And that's through um, a company that I'm affiliated with, the No Barriers Caregivers Program. And originally they were focused on you know veterans and, and so forth, but their caregivers program has been expanded to include caregivers of all kinds, of course, including dementia and Alzheimer's caregivers. So um, you, the application window opens up in the spring, so stay in the loop so that you can stay informed about how you can get on one of those uh, amazing retreats that will kind of get you to step outside of your comfort zone and just realize who you are again as a person, which is a, which a huge gift. If you're a military caregiver, you can look for breaks. Um, the Elizabeth Dole Foundation through Hidden Heroes has a respite um, relief for military and veteran caregivers. There are some qualifications there that you'll have to read up about. And then Semper Fi and America's Fund also has had has done retreats in the past. So that's an option that may be available for some of you who have that um, or are taking care of somebody with a military or, vet, or veteran background. And then this one, no link there, but basically you use your resources of your private care team. Some of the apps that I'm gonna be sharing a couple slides from now might help you coordinate that, but asking for it, scheduling it, um, planning something in advance, assigning someone to schedule you the break, say, hey, I'd really like to go on a concert or I'd like to have a night away. Can you look at and, and, and take, me, you know, take me away from all of this? And then reaching out and, and letting people know that you're going to need extra hands then. So um, sometimes it's not your immediate family. Sometimes you have to get creative here, uh, but your private care team definitely is a source for your regular breaks. Your next action to address emotional and physical burnout is just to talk to people, talk to people who understand and get it. We can certainly do hard things, but we don't have to do them alone. HFC um, has a lot of online support groups. They're facilitated by licensed social workers. Awesome. And they help you navigate your way through this Alzheimer's journey. Uh, if anyone is in the chat that's attended one of these, pop in what you've thought about it. But these groups meet weekly or twice a month, and they're for everybody, you know, adult children, spouses, partners, LGBTQ. Um, they even have ones in Spanish. So great resources that's available available to you and you don't even have to leave your home i am a uh, certified caregiving consultant i'm one of almost 200 certified caregiving we go through training a lot of us have been caregivers or are currently caregivers some of us focus on different niches um, but one thing we definitely have in common is all a passion for helping family caregivers and so you can, if you, I'd love for you to work with me if you're interested. However, but I put that out there, the map of the U.S. and Canada, because I really do believe that sometimes tapping into your local consultant can expose you to other resources because state by state, town by town, things vary.
daughterhood. So daughterhood circles um, were started by Ann Tumlinson, and they're basically communities. They too are spread out mostly in the United States. I facilitate one in the Northwest Atlanta area. So if you'd wanna join my daughterhood circle, come on. Um, I realize that for many, this is often their only time to kind of get out of the house once a month. So I try to schedule them. We've been doing them outside in Atlanta um, at an outdoor restaurant. Sometimes we get a glass of wine. You can order a nice meal. Um, sometimes we do them in other places as well. And we've done them online too, but depends. Each daughterhood circle kind of varies. We meet on a monthly basis. We, and I know in our circle, we talk about what's going, what's going well for people. We make sure that we address the worry of the day and connect them to resources. And we just provide this relaxed atmosphere and this camaraderie. And then in between meetings, we connect in a private Facebook group. So through Daughterhood, you might find a circle that's near you. Of course, the Alzheimer's Association, probably don't have to tell you all about this one, but this can put you in touch with support groups and resources in your area. Another thing is the faith community. And here's the thing, you don't have to belong to the faith community to, to um, benefit from some of their services and their resources. I have a, a local um, church near me who has a caregiving ministry, which I wish more had done this, but often they do, you know, online events, they do, um, you know, pre-COVID, they were doing regular conferences. And what a wealth of information that I get from, from this local community. So some of the big ones around you, you may want to check them out and see what kind of things that they have related to caregiving. Um, some of them also have Stevens Ministries, which may be able to provide services to you and, and just support. Uh, so that's something to look into. Lisa's Care Connection. So some of you may remember Lisa Gibbons from uh, Entertainment Tonight. She won Celebrity Apprentice and what did she do with her winnings? But she invested it in family caregivers. So I love that. And she offers things like through her community, Lisa's Care Connection. There's one in South Carolina, one in California. And they also do a lot of things virtually, but they have virtual grief support right now, which I think is, is wonderful because even if you just didn't lose somebody, there's so much anticipatory grief that happens with dementia and Alzheimer's and a lot of these other progressive illnesses. And also just with this pandemic, the loss of different things is so wonderful to have a resource of, of people that we can talk to. And then of course, you know, every state by state is different about their administration on aging. And so sometimes they even call them different things. Um, and so again, and fragmented, but it is what it is. Uh, but you can head to your administration on aging and you can and just tap into what your local resources on and see the links and the services they have for, for caregivers. Hey Elizabeth, I just then, wanted to I just yeah. wanted to point out a uh, special guest, Allison Corey, your director of Lisa's Care Connection, um, is is here in the room. So thank you for joining us. <laughs> That's awesome, Allison. Say hi to Kina for me. Um, but the uh, it's a yeah great connection. I got to know them because they were offering this journaling sessions during COVID, and that was just such a nice brain relief for me. I guess we're still during COVID, but last year when things were really heavy. Um, and but the last resource here on finding people to talk to is don't forget about your own circle and and coordinating things on your own. So having a group text. Um, sometimes you can share little funny things, you know, you know, you're a caregiver when dot, 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 I know it was something that with my sisters and I had where we just, you know, you can't make this stuff up sometimes. Another thing that we love with, um, I've got one with my girlfriends, my sister's group is an app called Marco Polo. And so basically it's a video chat. And what I love about that is like my sister at some point took the reins for my mom's primary caregiving stuff. And, um, Instead of interrupting her with a phone call or a FaceTime, we could all record messages in our Marco Polo and she could sit and watch them and respond when it was convenient for her. So that's a wonderful thing. And then you can of course see what everybody's up to day to day. I love the video chat. So this is something I wish someone told me and maybe it's super obvious to y'all, but, but I didn't know years ago that I was even called a family caregiver. In fact, I started a website and I didn't even have caregiver in it anywhere. Um, the first term that I personally latched onto was sandwich generation because we were squeezed between caring for aging parents and our, and our kids. 
and losing our minds. And so I started my blog, Savvy Sandwicher, and people thought I made sandwiches. So we, we changed it. But how to search for local resources, go to your um, whatever browser you use and you put in, you know, my case, Georgia, Marietta, or Atlanta, and some kind of keyword like caregiver support, family caregiver, resources for caregivers, and just see what comes up, see what comes up in your area. Um, it's just something I wish somebody had told me, so I'm passing it on. Next action um, is to request more hands-on help. We're spending a lot of time on the burnout one. The, all of the worries aren't going to be this long because this is something that we're all dealing with. Um, it's a lot on you all, especially during the pandemic. So we spoke about scheduling breaks. We spoke about talking to someone. The, the last action here we're gonna talk about is getting more help. And your caregiving journey is gonna go a lot smoother when you have some, some communication systems that are in place to help you coordinate everything. You can use your own Google Calendar, use your other systems if you want. It, these apps are out there and they are trying to help family caregivers. So I've listed the logos at the bottom. Um, the Iana Care, I, I Am Not Alone Care is uh, one because they really are trying to coordinate that, you know, hey, I need help with this. Who can help me? And among your care circle, they can kind of go in. And then there's other ones. I know HFC works closely with Family, family Proud and there's some other ones out there. When you are requesting help, though, one thing that tip I want to give you all is just to be specific about what you need. And you may not know when they ask you, hey, how can I help? People hate that question, right? But you can make a list of things when they're not asking you. And then that way, when they say, well, do you really want to help? Because I've got this list and here's some ways that you can help me. I'm trying to get to my doctor's appointment. I just need someone to kind of chat with mom and keep her company. Um, I need someone to go to Costco and pick up X, Y, Z, or I want someone to mow the lawn or uh, whatever it is, keep your list of specific things and on specific days if you need them. And that way you're ready. You're ready and you're armed when people ask you that question. There's a bonus for you. Um, through my own experiences, uh, I know that when caregiving came into my life, I already had a huge full plate going on working and, and balancing everything else. And so I developed these resources to not only help me to, but to help my clients. So one's a caregiver responsibility worksheet and one's a family responsibility worksheet. Um, if you're trying to do this all yourself, that needs to stop like today. And if you need coaching on how to do that, I can help you coach, coach you on how to do that. But in some cases, it's easier to let go of the family responsibilities, um, you know, maintaining the cars, taking out the trash, cleaning and laundry and giving up some of those things to other people so that you can free up time to take on some of the caregiver responsibilities. And then other things, maybe somebody in your care team is more qualified and has strengths in certain areas. So evaluate all of those things um, and figure out. And I think when you put it in front of you and you look at everything you're doing, no wonder you know, caregivers are working the equivalent of a part-time job right now. It's a lot. It's a lot on all of y'all. And so you need help. And so I'm hoping that these resources can help you. Next worry, will I make the right decisions? Oh, we, we just worry about it, you know, and decision-making fatigue is real and second guessing, um, are we doing the right things? I like to say that we're making the best decisions with the information that we have at the time, but sometimes we can't just say that, we gotta like really have some, some actions here. So one action that I'm gonna suggest with you is to meet with the professionals. Uh, professionals can help you with your decision making, take counsel. My dad used to always tell me that we, he didn't necessarily know more than I did. He just lived longer. Um, so take from trusted people that you know, from professionals. And one of the first people that I recommend that you connect with if you haven't already is a elder law attorney. Um, the National Academy of Elder Law Attorneys, will, you'll find somebody that specializes in this. And when you find someone that specializes in this, what they can do is they can help you connect the dots for you in your state and in your local area and let you know what services and resources are available for you. Oftentimes, the first session is complimentary. Um, so find out about that. But that's an amazing a resource for you. Financial planners. There's a lot of them. You probably know of one. Um, you may want to special specialize in someone that understands kind of the more of the the senior 
uh, landscape of things, but they're going to help you just maximize your financial resources. And again, figure out what benefits and things that you may qualify for or tap into that you didn't know about. Your Aging Life Care Association is another resource. Um, sometimes they're called geriatric care managers and you can find an expert um, on that. And that'll just give you the people to talk to that you know, if you're struggling with um, maybe finding a senior living community or um, other things like that, they're just gonna help you kind of hone in and address that specific, and they're experts in how to, how to care for, um, for, the, for our older generation. And I wanted to also mention the primary care doctor. I know for me and for many of my clients, what we found is that they can sometimes be the kind of that heavy person, the one that says the things that are not always most desirable. Um, and that allows you to kind of, you know, hey, I'm your partner, we're working together here, but you're gonna need somebody sometimes to share the bad news. Um, and so things like, you know, safety concerns in particular about driving, uh, things like, you know, being adhering to their medication regimen, those kinds of things. Like if, if you just feel like you're beating your head against the wall sometimes, um, they can be an ally for you. And I'll probably have a conversation with them, but they'll give you some assistance there. Another resource that um, I feel like is underutilized is the hospice and palliative care. I hear a lot from people that they wish that they had gotten involved with these organizations sooner. Both palliative care and hospice care provide comfort. Um, so when you're no longer kind of treating someone's condition is, um, and we know that we're dealing here with a lot of uncurable conditions, um, but palliative care can, can happen at any point in anybody's medical journey. And hospice care though, does usually have some kind of signal that there's an end of life um, some have say within six months, um, something like that. But let me tell you that my mom was on hospice for two years. Yes, she got evaluated every six months. Um, but what that did is it allowed my sister in particular when she, she was caring for mom at the end of life stage and gave her more hand, helping hands. She had people coming to help um, you know, do personal care and bathe my mom three times a week which was a huge effort. My mom was a very large woman. Um, they also did, you know, they ordered supplies, they ordered medication, they provided a chaplain, um, both for my sister and my mom, and a lot of other resources there just to help focus on comfort. So sometimes you can do that in your home and sometimes in an external facility, we've tried different ones, but it can provide a lot of relief. And so hopefully, um, just research it. Don't be afraid to ask the question uh, and just start the conversations about when you think that might be um, appropriate and, and getting aligned with people's, what they wanted to be true. You know your loved one best. And which leads me to this next one is, is you know, making the wrong decisions. One of our worries is that we just, maybe we didn't wish we knew what they wanted. And so getting clarity on their wishes while we still can um, and you can start this at any age. I, we're already starting conversations. We have been having conversations, my husband and I, and my family members about what we want our lives to look like, you know, what, how we want to live in our golden years. So one resource that's great is a conversation project. They give you a free conversation starter kit on how you can talk to your loved one about end of life care. Um, they even have special kits right now about if you're, you know, what you would want if you become seriously ill with COVID. Um, they also have a specific workbook that you'll find on caregivers of Alzheimer's and other forms of dementia. So that is a um, wonderful resource. So to just know what they want and know what they, uh, so you don't have to think about it. And there's such a peace of mind and clarity for you and comfort, knowing that you're just executing exactly what they want. And it's gonna minimize the friction among all the family members um, when things start getting more intense there. Five Wishes is another resource. This is one that I was introduced to when my dad was in a hospice facility. It was just something like laying out. And of course, by then I was like, oh, I wish we had done this. But what it did do is it allowed me to have that those conversations with my mom. In many states, this can be a legal advanced directive document. You might want to check with your elder law care attorney to make sure. This one does cost money. I think it's only like $5. Um, 
And, you know, when you care recipients with dementia and you're thinking, ah, it's too late, I don't have time to, to, to um, figure out this anymore, then you're going to have to really lean in more to your care team and have an open discussion with them about it. Um, better to have those sooner rather than late, later, um, allowing you at the end of life just to be more present and in the moment. Um, and sometimes for folks with dementia too, it can be easier for them to give them the document and have them look it over and write it out versus verbally communicating about it. So you may have to try, try different things there. Our next worry is fear of doing something wrong. Uh, we just don't want to cause anybody further discomfort or hurt them unintentionally. So many of us were never formally trained in a healthcare or social worker field, and we're just figuring it out as we go. Um, so it's, it's, it's very understandable that we would have worries here. So one tip I'm going to share, um, most of these are under the umbrella of getting more education and training. And we're going to talk about three ways you can do that by, you know, listening to podcasts, watching videos, and staying abreast of the latest and greatest tips from respected sources. And particularly for podcasts, I love a good twofer or buy one, get one. Who doesn't love like a deal, right? A buy one, get one deal. And so when you can combine things, particularly a self-care activity with training and education, that's a win. Um, so utilize your outdoor walks, your commute time, your household chores, all of those things, these are little places where you can start to implement and gain some of these some of these skills. So listening to caregiving podcasts. So one thing you need to know about podcasts is that, that, you know, there's all these different platforms out there. I use Apple Podcasts, but there's, you know, Google and Stitcher and Spotify and, and all these different places. So whatever you're most comfortable with, um, use that. But you can, they have their own search engine. So you can search for episodes, topics, um, whatever, you know, if you're dealing, want help with setting boundaries or asking for help or um, finding an assisted living community, whatever it is, put that in your podcast and see what kind of comes up. I'm going to share some of mine with you. Of course, I'm going to share mine. Happy Healthy Caregiver podcast. We have over like 115 different episodes. Um, some of these podcasts will focus on like interviewing experts. It, I look at family caregivers as being the experts. You all are living this and you're doing this. So we, I either, um, sometimes I have some self-recorded episodes, but I share a lot of caregiver spotlights where we can share tips from the trenches from people who are living it. Um, and with, all with that theme of just trying to live our best life, right? But there are a lot of others that I'm share here. Many of these are affiliated with the Whole Care Network, which is the network that I'm proud to be affiliated with. And there's a lot of caregiving related podcasts underneath that umbrella of the Whole Care Network. And you'll see some are dementia specific. Um, I think I even saw the podcast host for Fading Memories join the participants when we first logged on. So Jennifer, if you're here, um, hello. Um, but Untangling Alzheimer's and Dementia is another one where they focus on a lot of um, all all's authors, um, people who have written books about Alzheimer's and dementia, and a lot of them have been caregivers themselves, healing ties, you know, uh, life after caregiving, daughterhood, working daughter, how we got here. All of these are great podcasts. There's many, many more. I'm happy to say there are many more than there used to be. I love the podcast thing because I think it's just such a, a, a good use of our time. Um, and we can really, really find some good resources there. Watching video lessons is another option. Um, I love this quote, doctors diagnose, nurses heal, and the caregivers, we just make sense of it all. Um, but a lot of times, you know, when, you're, when your hospital discharges you, they're giving you instructions and you're, you're just not retaining it all. There's just too much going on. You're, you're thinking about too many things. And then you get home and you're just afraid you're going to miss a step and that you didn't get it all. So there is a company called Caring Boost. This one is, a, there is a cost associated, but they have a library of dozens of caregiving lessons, you know, everything from home safety, mobility, hygiene, giving an enema, monitoring vitals, um, administering oxygen. There's so many different things um, that, you can, that you can gain from Caring Boost and you'll watch it from a healthcare professional, uh, the videos. So of course you can find maybe similar things on YouTube, but I know that the Caring Boost one has healthcare professionals. Dementia Map, um, this is a great one where you can find out about events that are happening in this space, uh, dementia Alzheimer's space. So go on there, check out their event calendar. 
Uh, you can find maybe upcoming conferences and other webinars that you may not have, have heard about. And then the, the, um, the last one here I'm gonna share is the second wind dream. So this one is very cool because in addition to the video that lessons I'm gonna talk about, they also award dreams to older adults. Older adults, it's kind of like a make a wish foundation. Um, but, and they have some on-demand training lessons for like very affordable, like 10 bucks on, on certain things about getting through tough times with dementia, nutrition and meal challenges. But what is really cool is that they offer something called a virtual dementia tour. And so if you just are struggling with how to relate to your person with dementia, um, or maybe their family could use this training, they have a family edition. It's around $150. Um, maybe get everybody to kind of go into it, but it's going to help kind of get you in the in the frame of mind of, of figuring out what it's like for someone that's living with dementia and just basic things for them, you know, eating and, and buttoning and zipping and and how they're like things that we just take for granted of doing every day and how um, to give us some some empathy for them. And I think that will help maybe make some tweaks and adjustments in your day, which is just going to result in an overall positive outcome for everybody in the family. Last action in this category is, um, is, is subscribing to some trusted resources. And so these are some emails that I, that I recommend that you subscribe to. Um, they're gonna be ones that you're not gonna wanna unsubscribe to. I know I have a love hate with email, but what I love about email is they push the content to you. I don't have to sit down and make the time to go find it. Um, HFC is a great one, Daily Caring, Next Avenue, and of course, Happy Healthy Caregiver. And then I'm also going to recommend that you, you know, something specific to your disease. I know there's a lot of different types of dementia out there. And then something specific to your state elder law attorney. Um, they share a lot of valuable resources as well. So six emails that I recommend that you put in your inbox uh, right here. Our next worry, our fourth worry out of the seven that we're talking about is that no time for yourself. You're losing yourself. You just, you miss doing X, Y, Z, or you never get to see your friends anymore. Or you just want the freedom to do what you want when you want to do it. And so these are some actions to just help you figure out who you are again and make that time for your own self-care. And one of them is to simplify and streamline your responsibilities. So eating is a necessity of life. And so we have to, you know, I hate the question, what's for dinner? Um, but online ordering is something that you may just want to sit down and explore. It's going to take a minute to get it going the first time. Um, but we spend hours meal planning, grocery shopping, cooking, and feeding others. And technology can help us with that. And so most grocery stores and big box chain stores offer online grocery services. And meal delivery services. So sometimes you just get sick of doing the same old, same old, and you just don't even want to think about it. Um, there are companies, you know, HelloFresh, Blue Apron, local companies where you can just put your order in and either you can make the food and assemble it, or it already comes prepared and you can heat it up. Maybe some local caterers or friends of yours that catering that you can um, reach out to to see if you can get into their, into their routine there. Um, but this is just, getting, you know, free up more time and just everybody's got to eat. Like I said, there's also, of course, DoorDash and Uber Eats. And if you don't know how to work some of these things, this is a great thing, by the way, for a long distance caregiver that keeps asking you how they can help. Hey, I know how you can help. What, you know, once a month, can you send us, you know, a pizza, a sushi order, uh, whatever, um, to be delivered to either your care recipient or your home to just give you, um, give you a break. And so you can, you, they can coordinate those and order those or give you a, a gift card for them. There's even companies, there's one called Hank that has you, um, will figure out, you know, what you need and, and set up these services for you. So if you don't even want to figure out how to work the technology, there's companies that figure that out. And then I put Caring Bridge on here. It's not really, you know, related to the meals and all of that, but it does simplify keeping everybody updated and minimizing the disrupting calls, the texts, or feeling like you're going to forget to keep somebody in the loop and the pressure of that. And if you just don't want to put all your, your dirty laundry out on Facebook, this is a great way where you can set up a personal web page about your care recipient, keep everybody updated. They can share photos. When my mom um, or my dad was sick, I wasn't able to go visit dad due to her own health issues. This was a great way they stayed connected. 
did. Um, we would read um, letters and things to my dad and it just really helped. And especially when things are so isolating right now. Our second action to get lives back is to utilize social media in a good way. You know, we, we learn, we, we know some of the negative effects of social media, but there's a lot of positive out there too. They have search engines just like Google and other browsers where you can search for something disease specific, um, maybe the sandwich, or if you're a young caregiver, millennial caregiver, certain topics. Uh, so put something in there, see what pops up. Just a note is that some of them are private and some of them are public, the Facebook groups in particular. So you want to be sure, um, you know, they might not want to just put everything out there if you're in a, in a public group. Um, one thing I do like about the public groups, though, is I feel like they have a little more positivity. And um, so it just depends what you're what you're looking for. So try a couple on, cast your net wide, engage in a select few ultimately and figure out, you know, where you feel like the most at home. And then there's some fun activities just for you. There's people who do yoga, free online classes for your for caregivers. There's online Bible studies. You don't even have to leave your house to do these things um, through ladies who love Christ. And I even know a, a fellow certified caregiving consultant who does virtual dance parties, uh, support groups. So how fun is that to just turn up the tunes and just escape for a little bit? So it, it takes some creativity, but there are some good options out there. Worry number five is that you care about, you know, the, it's different than feeling like you're going to make a mistake is that you just want more companionship, you want more hands in their areas, you know, are they taking their heads, you're worried about falls. Um, so medication management, there are, there's technology that can help scale these concerns that you have. So um, I know one's called Black and Decker with Priya, um, or Priya's Black and Decker, and then Hero has a medication management system. So depending on your needs, certain ones might be better than others. Um, these are just preventative ways that are going to make, uh, you know, give you more peace of mind. The last thing we want is to make a tough situation even worse. So there's a life alert systems, you know, you see to minimize the worry about someone falling. We can't be there all the time. Things happen. Um, and so this just, again, peace of mind. Telehealth, making use of that. I think if a lot of you are, if you're working an outside job, some of your employee um, assistance programs may have telehealth options that you can tap into. That's a great resource. And then there's even like voice enabled um, health assistance. Uh, one of them is called Hands Free Health that you can just talk to without even touching anything, you know, just asking them questions, monitoring, monitoring different things, your vitals and so forth, your heart rate monitoring. Um, and it can act as an emergency alert device too. And some of them are, are really tied into a smartphone watch. Speaking of smartphones, one of the things that I discovered kind of a little late in life is just using Siri or whatever it is you have on your phone um, to, you know, sometimes you're in the midst and your hands dirty, or I don't know why I always think of things when I'm driving or in the shower, you can yell at um, Siri or whomever and let them know that you need to call the podiatrist at such and such time tomorrow, or whatever it is, just to kind of park that mental traffic and get those reminders. Um, and then they'll just pop up on your phone. It's a beautiful thing. For companionship, um, minimizing worry about um, your care recipient being happy and healthy. There's something called Clear Day at Home, which is kind of like think about your day program, but a virtual, um, a virtual day program for people, persons with dementia. And they have things, they have activities in there that can help. You know, some are live and some are recorded. Um, where you can just, you know, reminisce or do arts and crafts or learn about history. And it's just a way where you don't have to go searching for it. Somebody has curated it all for you. And that's, that's a great resource. Another one is a memory care directory. So these have, they vary. There's, this is just going to give you a directory of memory cafes that are in your area. And that may be a place where you can tap into for your loved one to have conversation, music, dancing, crafts. Again, reminiscing, but they're really specialized in persons with dementia. And then I put the Google Calendar on here because I used to get so frustrated. I live with my brothers here in the Atlanta area and my mom, when she lived nearby in assisted living, I would get so, so annoyed when someone would already be there visiting her. So I just felt like we should like spread the wealth out 
and visit and have for that companionship on different ways. So maybe that's something again that a, a long distance caregiver or somebody can help you with is just coordinating kind of the visits, kind of like a meal train, but a, a visit train. Here's my mama. Um, one of the things that we did to avoid boredom is uh, she loved audiobooks, um, depending upon what stage dementia your loved one is in. Um, did you know you can get free audiobooks through Libby? And so then there's no pressure if they don't like it or they don't finish it. All you need is a library card. Um, it's so much, so many things out there. Uh, I love that. And you can, you know, then you don't have to hear it. You can listen to it, especially if there's troubles with their eyesight. And then I love subscription boxes, like the one that my mom had here was, was specific for somebody, um, an older adult, but there's ones for like healthy snacks. And of course there's like clothing and puzzles and flowers and crafts and art and all kinds of things that you can do through subscription boxes. Another great idea for someone who's a long distance caregiver, um, great gift idea for, um, for holidays and birthdays and so forth. And then again, the FaceTime, FaceTime with friends and family, just letting people know, hey, can you call? Um, can, you, can you call me or can you call uh, you know, the care recipient once a week uh, just to check in? Because what that will do is again, it just gives you some, somebody else to kind of get in the mix of, of being the companion. And then it, that person's being entertained. You can then step aside and do something hopefully on your own for a few minutes. Um, and so that's another option. Money. Okay. I wish there was better resources here, y'all. I'm going to be perfectly honest. Many of us have had to change or alter our career, uh, minimize our hours in order to take care of loved ones. And we've sacrificed our own retirement investments, benefits, and overall earnings just to, to get by. Um, one action though, that we all can take uh, is just to organize everything a little bit better. So there's a app that I use in my family that we can share passwords amongst each other called Keeper. There are other ones out there. This is just the one that I use. Um, and you can keep, you know, keep screenshots of like insurance cards and um, the passwords, more than just passwords, but like anything that kind of needs to be in a vault um, is, and you can share them amongst different family members that are trusted. So that's helpful to have everything in one place. Automatic bill pay and bank alerts is another thing, especially with the elder fraud being on the rise like it is. Um, you definitely want to kind of get those set up. And then just to there's a there's an um, a service called Careful that gives you kind of this holistic picture of your loved one's uh, finances. So that might be something to check out. They'll watch their credit cards and their bank account activity, and they're going to notify you as the primary caregiver about any potential issues of fraud or late bills and, and that kind of thing. So you want to keep them independent, but you kind of still want to have a little bit of oversight in it. That might be a, a good option there. I wish we could get paid more for caregiving, but, um, you know, one of the big surprises I think is that people learn is that Medicare does not pay. Um, Medicare is the government health insurance for people age 65 and older, and they do not pay for long-term care services such as in-home care, adult day services, um, whether they're provided by a family caregiver or a professional. There's just nothing, nothing there. So there is some Medicaid. Um, so you'll see that this was a chart that I got off a recent article um, focused on spousal caregivers. However, it's relevant here for all of y'all too, is that these are the states that have Medicaid programs and private programs. And this is a fairly new uh, recent chart. Um, so something to look into there. Medicaid, you know, has you have to have some kind of financial uh, challenge or maybe some situations you can kind of buy into the program. But you're going to want to look at um, your state to see if there's some options for compensation that you can get there. Another option, um, if your state doesn't offer anything, is to talk with your care circle and your family members about a private pay situation. Let them know what this is costing you, that you've had to take, you know, you're going to have to share some vulnerability here, that the, the, you know, you've had to take a pay cut, you're no longer investing in your 401k, you're going to have to kind of lay it all out there and maybe um, come up with some kind of plan to private pay either now or maybe later once your once your care recipient if they're good with that you know passes and things get settled out with the estate that might be an option but those are discussions that may need to to happen 
And then of course we can save money. Um, one thing I'm learning all the time. One thing I just learned about is good RX. Maybe I'm late to the party here, but you can save, look up a, a medication and see locally who has the best deal on your prescription. Um, so good RX is a way that you can save money there and sub subscribing and saving in bulk, you know, for things I know for my mom, a lot of the, my, the incontinence supplies we used to order, um, they would just come automatically, uh, you know, once you kind of figured out how often they go through it and, and you could save money, of course, by buying in bulk at Costco. And then if you're shopping online, I do a lot of shopping online, um, you can earn cash back through Rakuten. It's just like a little plugin that goes on your browser and um, it'll automatically apply the coupons. I know there's some other ones out there, but this is the one that I'm, that I'm most familiar with. Um, and then you get checks in the mail and who doesn't love to get a check in the mail for just things they're going to buy anyway. And then on top of the check in the mail, you save money off the initial order with the applying of the coupon codes. Our last worry is around worrying about the overall loss of our loved one. Um, you know, do we know their family history? What objects were meaningful to them? What was their favorite color? Like these things will haunt you, or they can haunt you um, after your loved one passes away. And, you know, there's no way we're gonna learn all of it, but if you have the opportunity um, to address this worry and then begin to capture the stories. And we don't have to do those in big ways. You know, we're not, we don't have to necessarily have these elaborate scrapbooks. Um, and, you know, videos and things like that, but just even just taking your phone and doing voice memos and recording the conversations, um, asking the questions, you know, over a cup of coffee, um, just to kind of, you know, have those conversations, get, assign this to other people on your care team, say, hey, can you come over and just, can you concentrate? I'd love to get these questions, you know, answered. I'd love to have them recorded so that we have them. There's a company called Memory Well, um, where you, they will do this for you. It's a service. Well, they will, you know, put the story together. And I know like, even in ways, like when, if your loved one's in a senior living community or something, this is a great way for other people to get to know the person that they were before the disease, you know, started happening to them. Um, and so they, they will put all the, and what a treasure and a legacy that you can, that you can have for the future generations. Saving voicemails, that's something that you can do. I recommend you get them off your phone, save them somewhere. Um, I have these silly little voicemails from my parents that I love. And like, if I really just miss hearing their voice, I'll just, you know, play it. Um, and so that that's fun to have that kind of captured. And then sharing a photo album. I think, you know, we all know that the end is going to happen at some point. And so we can start, you know, working with our family members to start to kind of curate all those photos together. Um, or maybe if your loved one is still able to, they can tell you the stories about the photos. Um, there's special pencils you can write on the back of the photos um, so that they don't damage them. So those are kinds of things I think just capture the stories because um, we do have a finite amount of time to, to get those. Lastly, I just wanted to, you know, again, I wanna iterate that my hope is I wanna get you to integrate caregiving and self-care with your life and on a daily basis. And so we've got, you know, Happy Healthy Caregiver has a lot of resources that hopefully address a lot of different worries. Uh, we've got a bookshelf of resources, um, the podcast I'd mentioned, and then some different tools here. Um, one of them being a Facebook group that's focused on self-care for caregivers. And it's moderated and administered by three um, total certified caregiving consultants. Um, so, and then if you wanna schedule a complimentary session, you're welcome to do that with Elizabeth at happyhealthycaregiver.com. Uh, and you can get a taste of what it's like to work with me on a one-on-one -on -one basis. So I know that was a lot and I don't want you to feel overwhelmed, so just, Take action though, address one of your worries, whatever worry you had in the beginning of this when we started, what's one action that you're gonna take? If you feel comfortable, put it in the chat um, so that you know, you've know you got some accountability there. And the other thing that I think is I'm gonna make mandatory if you don't, not that I can really enforce it, um, but is to find a local or online support group that you, the, to, to help you with tomorrow's worry, because we can take action for today's worry, but we don't know what the worries are going to be tomorrow. 
get your group together before you think you even need it. Um, just start establishing a relationship there and start learning about the people and the resources, because then that is just going to feed you later when, you know, a crisis happens is that, you know, know where to look. And so I know we shared a lot, but this is just going to kind of give you a taste of what everything is. And, um, you know, it's out there. If you can't remember, you've got this recorded, um, and you can reach out of course to me and I'm happy to, to, to tell you more about it. So with that, if there's any questions, I don't know if we had any Alex in the chat. Um, I think you addressed them early <laughs> on, so you're very thorough. Uh, but yeah, certainly if anyone has any questions, feel free to put them in here. Um, feel free to reach out to Elizabeth at Elizabeth at happyhealthycaregiver.com. Um, you can also reach us uh, at HFC at info at wearehfc.org. Um, I know we threw a lot of stuff in the chat. Please don't worry. We'll be following up today uh, with a recorded uh, link to the recording as well as a link to all of the resources that Elizabeth shared. So Thank you so much for your time, Elizabeth. Thank you all for taking time out of your busy days. We hope this were that we hope this was helpful, um, and and more to come. Thank you. All right. Take care, everybody.